My name is Hilde Skanke Pedersen. I work as a visual artist here in Kautokeino in uh, northern Norway. We call our area Sápmi, where the Sámi people live. And my work is uh, influenced by our culture. I'm uh, very inspired by uh, politics in Sápmi uh, and in the world. Also, of course, like we all are now with the climate crisis, I do a lot of recycling in my art. That's very uh, fulfilling to do, to work with things that all other people would have thrown away. All my life I've seen a special mountain that I've been so fascinated by. It's near my my mother's birthplace in the east of Finnmark. And um, when we drove there each summer, I was uh, uh, so struck by that mountain. It's about by that mountain. It's very barren, but it has it has this wonderful um, patterns in a way in it that it's still alive in a way. I looked around a lot of second-hand shops and had a grey scale with me because it couldn't be beige or gr light green or it's very difficult to find pure grey. And, um, and I laminated this with a lot of help. I laminated these layers together so that it's not stitched in any way, it's laminated, glued in a way, with this kind of thin, thin, thin fabric made from glue and ironed. So it's painstakingly slow work, that too, <laughs> where you have to cut out all the pieces in, in the shape you want them from the different grey hues. It's a political statement that we have to take care of all mountains in the world <laughs> and not uh, not use them till they're not there anymore. I have worked a lot as a scenographer, uh, an art designer for film and theatre and television. And I worked a lot with textile because you can, uh, it's very expressive, you can have uh, sleek fabrics, textured, uh, anything, and it can catch a light in a different way. I wanted to, I wanted to do a work um, in homage to traditional Sami weaving. It's a very special technique, and uh, I don't know. I've, I had, I've had a long time, perhaps 40, 30, 40 years, some old, old remnants of some of these woven textiles and they are from the owner they have been uh, patched with a little knitted jacket or some rougher material um, you see the life that has been lived it, you can still almost smell the soot from the from the fire inside the tent because they use them uh, they use them still inside the tent. So it's uh, so um, magical in its way that people have used it for many, many years and discarded it in the end because it was too destroyed. But, but I saw the beauty in it and I wanted to tell a story about our heritage. I've worked a lot lately with altered fabrics that I alter um, a fabric, a sheer fabric, and with with glue and color, and it, for me, it takes on the presence of looking like um, reindeer hide that has been the hair has been removed from. I have done some artwork where I have taken my own black and white photographs, and I have wrapped it in that kind of new <laughs> altered material. This, that's my way of saying symbolically that we have to protect our 
land. We have to protect our yeah, nature everywhere. Also, I made the work from pharmaceutical waste um, with these blister packs, empty blister packs for medicine that I have collected from hospitals and many places. <laughs> I made this uh, work that I call Magic Carpet that um, also I feel is a political work, but it, it can have so many illusions. It can, uh, you could think of uh, being dependent on drugs or being healed, or you can think, think of the medical industry that earns a lot of money and it's not perhaps always right. And uh, people are, are, get, are push medicines from doctors that they shouldn't get. But it's also fantastic that we have means to stay well, that can help us yeah, have a good life and perhaps live a bit li longer than we, or better that we, than we could without medica medication. So um, it's a work that says a lot. But that also has a, a special aesthetic quality, I think. I wanted, as it started years ago, I wanted some kind of, I work with big, big sizes <laughs> often when it comes to art. And I wanted to do something that was small and that was joyful and that was, uh, for me, an alternative to um, the Sami silver uh, brooches. So it's been kind of a pet project uh, in between many of the things that I can... I feel that this is a project that I can really rest with and, and play with colours and let the colors take me where they, they want and the different ribbons and it's it's a pure joy but it's also difficult because when you have made a few and I, t I photograph them all I don't want to make uh, the same every time <laughs> so I have to really try and find new ways and uh, a special kind of work for me because it's not it's very unlike everything else I do and I think that's why also it's so enjoyable. The first big commissioned work I did was for the Sami parliament. It's, it's a very, very important piece for me. It's 120 square meters big because it has two sides of a huge um, concrete block. What I did, I had this one by two meters sink uh, plates that I engraved, etched, and uh, painted. So it was a, a painstaking process, but I like these um, long, slow processes. You have to be very patient, but all that love and, and commitment, it shows. I, I'm also a writer, and sometimes I think it's wonderful to to shift between the different ways of expressions. So now I'm, I'm working on a, a new play for the Sami theater and about a, a traditional woman from Karashok, a woman, person who has lived. And it's very challenging and uh, very interesting. So that's the next project.